I'm Sean King. I'm here at Titan Medical Center and you know at the age of 43 I just I don't feel like I should. I don't look like I think I should and I started asking around and, and Titan Medical is something that I decided you know I want to let them help me get back to my Bucks playing days. I want to look like I used to look. I want to feel like I used to feel and you know as I researched the area the, the name that just kept coming back up was Titan. 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 So I'm here. This is the beginning of a journey that I'm about to embark on and I'm so excited about it. You know, my family's excited about it and we're going to allow you to be a part of this journey because I know a lot of you are going through the same things that I'm going through. Wanting to feel better, wanting to look better. And as I gain more energy, as I lose body weight, as I start to become the Sean King of old, I want you guys to encourage me. I want you guys to challenge me. I want you guys to keep me honest and on this path because at the end of this is happiness. And that's what we want. Various different ways. Uh, a good friend of mine, Art, here, he, he told me all about it and then uh, did some research on my own. Uh, I was hesitant at first. It took a few months, I believe, of convincing, but finally talked me into getting just getting the blood work done, kind of getting my numbers and figuring out where I was at and if that was kind of uh, playing a part in what was going on, and, uh, and that was it. Oh, I was tired a lot, took a lot of naps, uh, wasn't seeing any results at the gym. Uh, recovery times at the gym were taking a lot longer. Uh, libido was low, um, energy was really low, um, and as my wife can attest to, my mood swings were pretty highs and lows. There was like, no middle ground, so all those things was kind of something, something. Something was going on. Something wasn't right. I didn't have completely low testosterone, but it was on the low numbers, uh, very low end of the normal spectrum. But uh, basically, talking to Cass and, and everybody else here, basically just said, "Well, numbers are numbers, but what's, what do you feel like?" And I knew that I didn't feel like I did 
you know, in years past, and I wanted to get back to that kind of that feeling again. So that, that's basically what I found out. Currently, I'm using the uh, testosterone replacement therapy as well as the Hercules potion I got into recently. I feel like I'm in my late 20s, early 30s again, and you know, I'm rocking 45 right now, so I'm feeling pretty good. Uh, energy levels are way up. I'm finding I want to do more with the family, want to do more after work, which is a big concern. I, you know, I work 12 hour shifts, so I get home at six o'clock at night. It had been before, come home, find the couch, land on the couch, eat dinner, go to bed. And that was kind of my uh, evening routine. Um, you know, when you have a family and you have other things you want to get doing and you want to fight age, it's a good idea to just kind of keep moving. So now at this point, about eight months uh, working with Titan, now I get home, I put in a workout after I get home, and then I'm actually awake and able to function until I go to bed at night. So it's been great. Very happy. It, it's one of those things where, as I was just talking to my wife on the way over here, this is now a, a permanent staple in our life. This is a part of where I don't want to give this up. I just want to find new ways to incorporate it into my life and, and basically find ways to make my life better using the products here. So true. Yes. Because then there's going to be cake. Hey, take some home to Enzi. Yeah, take it home. Yo, got, <laughs> we don't need this. Yeah, it's Enzi's birthday so far. I know, right? Yeah, I think mine's still in your trunk, right? <laughs> yes, it's actually still in your trunk. And there's a little bit of energy. Yeah, I'll play both John here and I'm really excited. I got a new little present in the mail today. So Ice Shaker, if you guys haven't heard of this company, it's uh, Gronkowski, Rob Gronkowski and his brother's company. And they made uh, these awesome tumblers. So they're really, really heavy duty tumblers and they say, hey, listen, John, we want you to be a part of this. We want to engrave Titan on them. If you guys want to use these things for your athletes, for your patients, for yourself, 
We're gonna send you out one. If you guys like them, then you guys can get along with the Ice Shaker family and start getting them engraved. So at that point, I got the cup in. It's awesome, really, really heavy duty. Comes with like two different lids. So you have this lid, which is like a shaker lid. It's a regular lid right here, right? And then you have like your more traditional lid. You know, if you're drinking coffee or a cold drink or whatever it is. Um, it's even got a little shaker thing in here. So if you are shaking up protein or any supplementations or anything like that, it has it in there. So it should shake it up pretty well. I haven't got to try that because I usually don't take like uh, supplementations like that. Mine are all injectable from Type Medical Center. But at this point, I'm going to use this cup for sure, 100%. If anybody knows me, I always walk around with a little cracking cup, um, tight medical center on there. It's kind of beat up because I've used it for so many years. Got a lot of use out of it. But this thing looks even more heavy duty. So I'm really, really pumped to have this. I've been looking for something like this. And when they reached out to me, they said, hey, listen, do you want to do this? I'm like, man, this seems like it's going to be a good fit for tight medical center. So it's in gray. It's not a sticker either, which is really, really cool. Like I said, it's really good quality. And that's what tight medical center is all about quality therapies, feeling good, looking good, performing better, and having those awesome things like this that are top quality too as well. Just like our clothing. We wanna make sure everything is top notch and first class for our patients, for our athletes and tight supporters out there. So I'm gonna get these very soon. This was our first sample that came in. So I'll update you guys and then we'll put these on the website. So if you guys wanna buy your Ice Shaker Titan Medical Center cup, you guys can do it too. And you guys will have it along with you guys, drink your water, your supplements, anything you wanna put in this bad boy. So stay tuned. I'll bring you guys more of these awesome Titan Medical Center Ice Shaker cups and you guys can utilize them. So guys, have a great day and uh, I'll be playing around with my new Ice Shaker cup. See you guys. What's up guys, I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we are back with another Cupid's Corner. Cupid's! All right, so if you guys are just tuning in or you haven't tuned in before, we always go over great topics and tricks and tips to help your guys' relationship succeed, hopefully take it to the next level, or maybe even reignite those flames that may have been diminished over the years. We're here to help you guys. We wanna give you guys some, some good experience maybe we went through or we've seen other couples or friends go through, mm -hmm. um, you know, whether it's a good relationship, a bad relationship, getting all this knowledge and education should help you guys in your relationship or your future relationship. So this week, we're gonna talk about something that has happened to everybody. That's having an embarrassing moment, mm -hmm. right? I'm sure everybody can think of one you embarrassing all moment, right? Had it. I don't We've care. Who you are. I don't care who you are, how cute you think you are, <laughs> or what you think is going on. Yep. You have all had an embarrassing moment. Absolutely. <laughs> and this could be a number of different things from yep. things you've said, something that's happened to you, whatever it may be. We'll cover a couple of different examples here in this show, but you know, just to start off, listen, everybody is going to have an embarrassing moment. Everybody's been through it, and then how you react afterwards might show it. Like if you do an embarrassing thing, your face might turn red, like a strawberry, right? <laughs> um, or you might get real quiet. I mean, there's a lot of different things or ways that people cope with embarrassing moments. Mm -hmm. But this topic we're originally talking about is with your partner, right? So if you and your partner are out and an embarrassing moment it happens, what are you gonna do to help support your partner and make them not feel maybe as uncomfortable as they might be feeling when the embarrassing moment happens. I know, I know. Just go, <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I should have got that on camera. Oh no. I'm kidding, oh, I'm no. kidding. So I don't think anything is worse than if they did do an embarrassing moment don't do for that. you to laugh at them in their face. Don't do that. And you know, it, it might have been funny, right? Um, but that person, your partner, might have not have thought it was so funny because it happened to them. Mm -hmm. And if it happened to you, if you put yourself in their shoes, how would you feel? Right. And different people feel different ways about things. Some people don't care. Some people really take it like, oh man, like I just did this and everybody just seen this. And I feel stupid and I just want to go home, mm -hmm. right? Curl up into a little ball in my bed and I have anybody see me. But that's not the really way you should really help your partner or you should take that easy road getting out of it. Um, you know, embarrassing moments happen all the time. Trust me, they've happened to me. They've happened to Sharice. Uh, everybody that I've been with has definitely had an embarrassing <laughs> moment. It's really how they get over that embarrassing moment. Yep. So the best thing, if it was you having an embarrassing moment, try to play it off, you know, laugh about it. It's easier if you laugh about it than somebody else laughing about it in your face. At least you can laugh with other people about it 
And you know, you make it a funny joke. Like, listen, it happens. Everybody happens. Ha ha ha. It is what it is. And you move on. Right. Um, I think it's when you hide it that people really take a stickler on it. And they're like, oh my God, did you see that person? You know, and you just try to be real quiet. And it just draws more attention to you. So <laughs> that's just not a good thing. But when your partner has an embarrassing moment, and let's talk about, it was a good example Sharice brought up just a little bit earlier when we were talking about this, was let's say you go to the bathroom and you walk out and you have toilet paper hanging off your pants. Or toilet paper on your shoe, girls. Yes. That happens often. Dragging it on the heel. <laughs> but you're walking out like, oh, oh, yeah, I yeah. just put on me some perfume <laughs> and I put on my lip gloss and I'm so cute. Oh, uh, but you didn't see that little white piece <laughs> dragging behind you. But everybody else has. It was like, did you see that? <laughs> you know, uh, so the biggest thing is, is <laughs> let's say, you know, I was to see that on Cherise or vice versa. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you react to something like that? How do take you help them? Take it off them? immediately. You help them. You take it off immediately. You help and try them. to do it in the most discreet way possible. Very discreetly. So not everybody sees them and they're not feeling uncomfortable in a group or a crowd around you. You don't want that, okay? Mm -hmm. And you want to make them feel as comfortable as possible. You want to support them. That's the big thing mm -hmm. is, I think, support. Yeah, and I must touch on this topic, not that I'm like, you know, you know, one way or the other for guys or girls. I think it happens in both departments, to be quite honest with you. But do not utilize your partner to make yourself look better. Oh, I yeah. feel like that could probably be an episode on its own. But yep. don't utilize them to make yourself look better. So you might, let's just say you utilize this embarrassing moment. You don't even realize it might be an embarrassing moment for this person. Mm -hmm. And you're utilizing it to make yourself look better. Yep. Don't do that. It's like throwing them underneath the bus. Yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. You know? Um, you know, you want everybody to think, oh, I'm the best. And look, they're, they're stupid. Look at that. And mm -hmm. like, that's your partner, right? Yep. And that can affect your relationship down the line. That can make them think like, well, this person I can't count on. Right. I can't trust. Mm -hmm. You know, if that embarrassing moment happens and you don't help them or support them in that, what if something serious happens that they're, they're really embarrassed about or don't want to talk to you about because... They don't know how you're going to react to it. Are you going to laugh in their face if they tell you something that's serious? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, it, it really does come down to that. When you're in a relationship with somebody, you're spending a lot of time together. If you're in a marriage or you're, you know, you're engaged or you have a very serious relationship where you're living together, they're going to see everything that goes on. Mm -hmm. This means if you have diarrhea, all right? <laughs> well, no, actually, now that you bring that up, like, you know, being serious, because this is an example, you know, I like to give the examples. The examples are key. <laughs> but I was in a really, 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 really bad car accident, right? And I've never, ever broken or hurt anything really up until that point. Um, but, you know, I had a what was like a partial dislocation in my shoulder and my shoulder and my arm was in a sling so at this point right i have to take a shower okay now i don't want to be looking like a hairy monkey down the street so of course i'm over here like mm, well, what do i do <laughs> i'm like i can't wash my hair all the way because i have one hand but there's only so much you can do with one hand when, especially if you can't get like you know let's just say first few days or whatever it is yeah. or the surgeries i've had because i had multiple surgeries multiple yeah. laparoscopies yeah. from endometriosis yeah. you can't get the bandaging wet you know so you have to ask for help like and it is kind of embarrassing because you're like um like here's the razor can you shave my legs and then they gotta go and they gotta shave your leg and it's like so embarrassing <laughs> it's like oh my god you have to shave my legs you might have to shave some other places you know <laughs> take <laughs> so that bikini like, line guys <laughs> so yeah, make sure you use slaver it up real good out there guys okay <laughs> nobody wants razor burn Ugh. but uh yeah that's like an example of an embarrassing and that's just between you guys it's not even having to do with public right. you know it's just between you guys but you're feeling like I was I mean I was kind of embarrassed not like you know I wasn't gonna ask him to do it because it needs to be done so I'm like I, you know I gotta I gotta ask you to do it and then he did it but he did it and he didn't make me feel uncomfortable about it you know he was like oh yeah, yeah I got this I got this he's like you know and made me feel good about it and that's what you're supposed to do make him feel good about it instead of like oh my god look at it, you're so hairy I gotta believe I gotta do this what I gotta do this Man, you gotta go over twice I gotta change the razor blade it's so hairy <laughs> You know, you don't want to do that. You don't want to make them feel uncomfortable be because, terrible. you know, they're inept to not ask you for help again. And, no. and that will break down the trust factor in your relationship because sure. they don't trust you to even ask you to help them out. And you might not even think it's embarrassing. 
for one person it might be embarrassing, to the other person it might not be. Mm -hmm. But you don't want to assume either. So that don't you just want to be as supportive as you possibly can. And this could happen in public, this could happen in a job, this could happen behind the scenes, mm -hmm. it could happen in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. A prime example is mm -hmm. erectile dysfunction for males. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys suffer from ED, erectile dysfunction, okay? And you know, males, we have this ego, we're men, right? That, and if we can't perform, we feel less than a man. Mm -hmm. And you know, if we're going to you know get busy per se, and at that point something's not working properly, and the girl's like, oh my God, what's the matter with you? You know, I can't believe this. Yeah. Like, you know, is there something wrong with you? Like, then you're like, first of all, your self-confidence is getting knocked down in the dirt. Mm -hmm. And then every time that you possibly might go to get busy, you're it's in the back of your mind. And you might not even have physical ED, mm -hmm. but now you have mental ED because you're thinking about it. You don't have a problem physically all the time, but now you're mentally and it's causing problems in your game uh and at that point you just don't feel comfortable with your partner after that you know mm -hmm. and, and it's something you will have to talk about afterwards, that's hard to to, you know, to, to re, recover to from. reignite Absolutely. so you know just tread that is a tre treading water tread lightly there you ladies know, uh you know ladies don't make your partner and guys don't make your partner feel yeah because could, this could be a you know girls out there you're going through hormonal issues especially postmenopausal women yep. okay uh, those of you out there yep. you might have some vaginal dryness yep that yeah. could become a little bit of an issue during intercourse. Yep. That's the same thing. You you guys out there can't make your significant other feel bad about that. You know? You know? At that point, you want to be supportive. Like, hey, listen, you know, this is something I can help you out with. You know, or maybe we can look at some different things that could help. Like, at that point, mm -hmm. it'll make things better for both of us. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that where communication comes into play mm -hmm. and being supportive of your partner. I mean, it happens a lot of different things. They could come home with a story and tell you something embarrassing that happened at work. Mm -hmm. Console them afterwards. Talk to them afterwards. Make them feel comfortable. You know, try to get a laugh out of it possibly. Like, you know, like, oh, don't worry about it. And give them an example of something that might happen to you embarrassing. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they're like, oh, cool. And I'm telling you, it will lower inhibition as far as the walls being up and opening communication lines even more. And it's, mm -hmm. it's honestly, it's a buying experience. Make sure that you have some sort of, I think too, just my personal opinion, that you have some sort of physical touch when you're talking to them. Mm -hmm. Cause I do feel like, you know, when you console, console, yeah. like a real genuine console, yeah. that they can feel it, you know, not just words. Yeah, I mean, Actions. Like, like a hug. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a, you know, that's a big one. I mean, I, anytime Therese has ever been upset about something, mm -hmm. You know, you want to console them with that way, and that's that's way like physical contact. You know, it, it makes you closer to somebody. That's what it is. You know, mm -hmm. so things like that will help your guys' relationship. You know, and embarrassing moments. So embarrassing moments can happen in a number of different ways too. And you don't want to embarrass your relationship. Mm -hmm. That's another aspect of things. Mm -hmm. So embarrassing relationship. Let's talk about that. That means that. You know, when you go out in, in public or, or anywhere else where people are at and you do something that's embarrassing to your partner. Now, I don't mean you walking out with toilet paper on your shoe mm -hmm. or slipping on a stair or whatever it may be. I mean, you're doing something that's causing embarrassment to you or your partner. Mm -hmm. Prime example. A couple of my friends go out. They go out all the time, right? Uh, one dates a lot, you know, and he tells them about some of his experiences. So he tells me that, you know, he's dating this person long term, you know, they've been together for five or six months, loves everything about her, except he gets embarrassed. I said, what do you get embarrassed about? He tells me, he said, you know, we'd like to go out, we'd like to go have some drinks. But after a few drinks, um, you, you know, she's not the same person. She's wild. And she, she, <laughs> the wild side comes out. And, she real wild. And, you know, he's more of a conservative type where she goes drinking, they go drinking, she gets on a bar and she might flash somebody or whatever it may be, right? And he's embarrassed by that because... She should be embarrassed too. It is. Everybody's different, right? But, you know, that's where setting the boundaries at. Like, is this okay? But if you break those boundaries and it's embarrassing to the person, like, they're going to kind of look down on it, like, in the relationship. Like, man, like, now when we go out, am I going to get embarrassed when we go out? You know, fighting in public, mm -hmm. making a spectacle out there is embarrassing for a couple. I used to do that when we first met. Don't do that. I used to do that all the time. You know, there's 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 reasons why. One, everybody sees it. It's not good. They're going to think of you guys like that as a couple yep. or as a person. 
You know, and some people, I don't care. I, you know, well, listen, guys. <laughs> I understand you don't care, but it could be embarrassing to your partner. I think it's just, you know, I think ultimately now that I'm a little older, okay, but, you know, back when I was 21, I didn't care, okay? <laughs> I'll be honest with you. But I think looking back on it now, it's like, you know, ultimately – you might be not realizing that you're not just making yourself look bad. You're making both you guys look bad. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's then people start to kind of look at you in a different light. Mm -hmm. You know, like mm -hmm. they, maybe you have friends, believe it or not, mm -hmm. that may not want to hang out with you guys anymore. I don't want to get embarrassed by them. You know, or, like that, or I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to see him. Like, I, I just want right. to hang out tonight. I don't want, I don't want to hang out with people that are going to fight. You know, I mean, I, I've gotten to that point. Where, you know, I, I don't want to go out with people that want to fight. You know, because I'm like, listen, I only had so much time to hang out. And I want to be able to chill and relax. And me and my husband don't fight very seldomly, do we? Right. You know, but it's like, I don't want to be around that. So I can only imagine if, you know, back in there, you know, if you're fighting. I mean, you you're really are embarrassing yourself and each other. You know, there's a, there's a time and place for everything. And even if you, there is something that needs to be, like, handled right away, let's say something goes wrong. Take them to the side. Go to somewhere where you guys can have a, a, a discreet conversation about yeah. what's going on. Or if it's that bad, you know what? It's time to end the time night. to go. Because other embarrassing things are probably going to happen at that point because people Wait, are upset. Escalate. People are mad. They're trying to outdo one another in some situation scenarios mm -hmm. I've seen out there. So at that point, don't do it. Stay away from it. Okay, that's the best advice that we could possibly give. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, too, if I had to give real, real good, detailed advice is that once you realize what the buttons are on your partner, okay, don't press the buttons. I mean, also you will learn each other as time goes by mm -hmm. and you know what the hot buttons are. So you're like, you already know, don't press those buttons. When we go out, just don't press those buttons mm -hmm. and maybe we won't get to this escalated point. Mm -hmm. You know, but like I said, you guys won't know that unless you communicate with each other. Like, hey, listen, I didn't like that. I didn't appreciate that. I don't want this to happen again. And this made me feel bad. This made me feel insecure because that's usually what it is. You know, I didn't want this, 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 whatever it might be. You didn't introduce me to so-and-so. Who is this girl? That was another common, you know, fight. But, you know, we had to talk about it. And then we got to the point where it was like, okay, we went out. It was, you know, fixed to some degree. And we just didn't press the buttons. So at that point... That's what this conversation is about. Don't worry about embarrassing things. If they do happen to you, support your partner if they do. Mm -hmm. Don't become an embarrassment to your relationship or your partner too as well. So that sums up this Cupid's Corner for this Sunday. Join us every Sunday, 11 a.m. on ABC. And if you miss it, don't worry. We're on YouTube. Type, type Medical Center in there. Go click the all notifications, subscribe button, or our social medias. I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we'll see you next Sunday for another Cupid's Corner. See you then.